This morning, we're getting the scoop on property trends, values, and market buzz. And I'm joined by Dan Brown from FC Tucker, and he's got the end of the year real estate report for us to dig into. Thank you so much for joining us, Dan. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> and this month, we are looking at how the market changed in 2023 and looking ahead to what we can expect in 2024. Dan, it's it was a busy year uh, last year. It really was. You know, 2023, looking back, um, was a dynamic year. Um, you know, we, we transitioned. Indi Central Indiana, which is where we focus, obviously, is, uh, was a market that started a as a sprint. Okay. Um, and it wound up, frankly, as kind of a slow walk. Huh. Um, and, and the reason for that primarily is the rising interest rates, which everybody is aware of and everybody's been watching and we've been talking about all year. Yeah. Um, so let's keep in mind, even going back before 2023, 21 and 22, if you were trying to buy a house, you knew very well that that, was, that market was, ha, has been deemed uh, you know, a once in a lifetime kind of market oh, because absolutely. it was driven by the pandemic and yes. a bunch of other things. So yeah, I mean, we had people you know, standing 15 deep trying wow. to get an offer on a house. That's, that's not coming back anytime soon, I don't think. Okay, good. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, nobody enjoyed that, right? it was exhausting. <laughs> Um, and, but what happened was it really kind of still trickled into the beginning of 2023. We were still writing multiple offers in the early 2023. Buyers were still racing to, ho to get ha to houses before they, they were bought. And, you know, that was a factor of the earlier market. So the rising interest rates, which actually started rising in 2022, okay. it, took, it took until last fall for those interest rates to really have an impact on not only how quickly houses sold, but also the price. That's incredible. It, it, well, it just it speaks to how much demand there is. Yes. Everybody has been trying to buy a house or wants to buy a house uh, for the last couple of years. There is so much demand, and we have a national housing shortage, which we've talked about on this program before. So it's not going to be a, a, a buyer's market anytime soon. No. Uh, the seller's always going to have a bit of an advantage from a supply standpoint. But um, it did slow down dramatically, and that, that required some adjustments in expectations on sellers as well as buyers. And how have mortgage rates affected the market? Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is the one. That is the biggest That's a story. Heavy loaded question. It's a there. loaded question. <laughs> so in 2020, you know, prior to 2023, we had historically almost artificially low interest rates, and that speaks. You know, there's two parts to buying a house. One is availability. Is there a house I want to buy, which has been really curtailed? And one is affordability, which is driven almost entirely by the interest rate. You know, people don't realize, but it's an interesting fact I share, that $10,000 in purchase price only relates to about $7.5 a month in your payment. It's the interest rate that changes that. So keep in mind this, interest rates more than doubled in 2022 into 2023. They went from around 4% to it touched 8% in October. Yeah. And that doubled people's expected payments. So that kind of shut down their interest in a lot of ways. It made them kind of second uh, guess themselves okay. and also delay their decision, which I think is going to happen in 2024. Very interesting. And another important question for you. You know, my husband and I were constantly <laughs> looking into the market, yeah. looking for, you know, our first home. Sure. So we're in that interesting process. So what do you recommend? I mean, moving forward, looking into this year, 2024, how does that look like for couples like me and my husband? You know, whether you're just getting started or you're on your last house, availability and affordability are the two keys. Here's the good news. Interest rates have started to moderate. Remember, those interest rates didn't just go up by themselves. The Fed raised borrowing rates because they were trying to calm inflation, which housing prices were a lot of. I mean, housing prices were going up 15 and 20 percent per year for wow. a couple of years. That was a record. The prices have stayed up a little bit. Okay. They've started to taper back down. But that peak interest rate was in October. And it, was a, it, it touched 8%, which hadn't been seen in 20 years. Wow. So now, they're, uh, on Friday, uh, yesterday, or day before yesterday, the rates were in the low sixes. They're forecasted to be even lower than that as the year progresses. So here's the good news for anybody who's buying a house. Okay. The affordability side of that is going to, get, going to get better. That payment is going to get a little bit more tolerable, even with the higher, with the higher prices, because of the interest rates. Mm. Here's the other side of that coin also, the availability portion. As people buy houses, remember, most people who buy a house also have to sell a house. Ah. And so that helps 
there's not much to look at right now. If you've been out, if you've been out looking around with your realtor, there's not a lot to look at. Of course, it's the winter time, and that's true. But as as people start coming back into the market after sitting out waiting for what's the economy going to do, exactly. and what are the interest rates? Me, going to do? that's right. Me. Every you're everybody. <laughs> You know, the economy didn't tank. We didn't have a recession. The rates are moderating, and they're getting back into something that most people can consider affordable or normal, whatever normal it may be. Right. And so as we move into that, people are going to be selling their house because they now are going to buy their house, and that creates more inventory. We have had, uh, you know, the, the number of houses that we have for sale in central Indiana is... Uh, is dramatically low. There's not a lot out there because people are just waiting. And here's the other reason for that. We call it being rate locked. 60% of our viewers and my customers and our customers have an, have an interest rate on their mortgage below 4%. And they're not going to sell that 4% house mortgage and jump into one that's eight. But as that starts to taper down, that gap narrows they will go back into the market. So the closer we get to four, which won't happen, but if we get into the low sixes and fives, we're going to see more activity. And we expect a very, very busy year. Dan, thank you so much. And of course, uh, I'll be following you for more information because we are looking forward to buying a home hopefully this year, my hubby and I. Well, so. <laughs> I, my advice to anybody is sit down with you. You've got to have a plan. It's going to be a challenging market. It might even create some rising prices again. Yeah. And so my advice to anyone is sit down with your realtor, make a plan, get with your lender, have a lender so you can navigate these rates. There are a lot of good programs out there and a lot of options, and it's time to explore them now before the spring market hits. Thank you, Dan, so I'm much.